Hi, this is Dana Hawk with the Museum of the American Indian in Novato. And I'm here with another show of wild crafting with an indigenous perspective. And today we're talking about bay. And I'm really excited to share about bay. So just in case you don't know, this is what the bay leaf looks like. And this is actually a little bay nut right here. And this is grows all over the bay area. Um, this is a little bit different than the kind of bay leaf that a recipe um, would ask for you to put in like a stew or a soup. This is Umbel, um, Umbellularia californica, hard to say. Um, and the kind that you would put in your soup or stew is a Loris nobilis. Um, you can, however, use these in cooking, just by the way. Um, but it's about three times as strong as the kind that you'd buy in the store. So you use just a little bit less if you're going to put that into um, a soup or something. Um, and today we're going to talk about the bay nut. And it was kind of interesting because I had this whole other idea about which food I wanted to do today. Um, but the bay nut really wanted to be talked about because I was noticing outside my front door every morning when I would walk out the door, I'd be stepping on bay nuts. So my neighbor's bay tree was putting out a lot of bay nuts this year. Um, and I was stepping on food every day, basically. And so being in the indigenous mind, trying to be every day, um, I was like, okay, I can take a hint. It's going to be about bay nuts this time around. So, um, the first thing is I just want to talk about these little guys. Um, they're really kind of fascinating. And right now, this time of year, about from October, sometimes through December even, but October, November for sure, around the Bay Area, you can just see them on the ground. And like I said, these trees grow everywhere. And so they look usually about this color when you harvest them and they really easily peel. So the bay nut is closely related to the avocado and some people actually will eat the fleshy part of it. I've never been able to eat it. And I guess there's a real sweet spot as far as when it's the exact right time to eat the fleshy part. Um, and I haven't found it yet, but you can play with that if you want. Um, we're gonna concentrate on the nut inside. Um, the great thing about the nut, one of the, one of the great things about the nut is, is the flavor is compared to a combination of coffee and chocolate. And those are two of my favorite things on the planet. And it has a slight stimulant in it. It's similar to coffee and it's, it shares the same constituent as coffee. So that's nice. Um, supposedly it has a shorter, um, stimulating effect so it doesn't last as long as coffee so it's a nice little pep without keeping you awake all night and it, the leaves themselves going back to leaf for a second they have uh, they're antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory they're neuroprotective and analgesic and the nuts are a stimulant like I said a digestive aid um, it contains that constituent similar to caffeine like I said Okay, so the nice thing about when we talk about the ethics of wild crafting, the easy and sweet thing about harvesting bay nuts is they're on the ground. So you don't need to take them from the tree at all. Just pick them up off the ground and thank the tree for giving it to you anyways. But in the fall, they are prolific. And so I wanted to say when you harvest bay nuts, you can't just pick them up and eat them like you might take a walnut and crack it open and eat it. It needs to go through a process, much like uh, acorns or olives. Um, you cannot eat it right away. It wouldn't be tasty and it wouldn't be healthy. And so in processing the bay nuts, there are many different ways to do it. And people that have strong feelings about how to process, a, process the bay nuts. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of different ways and then the way that I like to do it. And so the first thing you do, like I said, is you peel it and then you want to give it a quick rinse and a really big deal is getting them dry enough. Some people put them in a brown bag and put them in the cupboard for two years. That wouldn't work for me. I would totally forget about them. I think that's really extreme. So I'm never going to do it that way. Some people um, just let them dry out in like maybe a cookie sheet in a warm place um, 
out in the sun. Some people put them um, up on the dashboard of their car um, for a, about two weeks. Um, and so what I did is I put them on a cookie sheet for about a week and a half and just put them on my stove where I was continuously cooking things and they, they warmed up and dried out. Um, and there's no real way to tell if they're dried out. So um, I experimented a little bit. Um, so what I did then is I put them out on a cookie sheet and I baked them for about an hour and a half at 350 degrees. So this is going to vary a little bit with the nut and when you, when you harvested them and what your oven's like. And so a little trick is to crack one open and it's going to look pale. Um, and you're going to put it with the other nuts that are in the shell. And so what you can keep doing is checking on the one pale nut. And when the one pale nut turns a really dark brown, it means all the other nuts in their shell are ready and you can crack them open. And so then what you have is, you know, if you haven't cooked them enough, people talk about getting a sore throat when they eat them. And so you don't want that. If you happen to eat one and feel a little bit of a sore throat, they haven't cooked enough. Um, but what you have when it's done is this really wonderful, crunchy, coffee, chocolatey flavor. Um, that's so unique and wonderful. And you can just eat them by themselves. Some people salt them. Some people make like a bay nut truffle. Um, I saw recipes for mole. So if you know how to make mole, they replace the chocolate with a bay nut. Um, uh, there was a ricotta cheesecake recipe I saw somebody talking about. Bay nut brittle. I'm curious about making a flour with them. Um, but we're gonna grind them up and make bay nut coffee today. Okay, so to make the bay nut coffee, you just put your roasted bay nuts into any coffee grinder. And so it's definitely not exactly the same as coffee. Um, it has more moisture. So what I did is I ground it yesterday and it kind of dried out a little bit. I'm just gonna put it in this little French press. and it can work in any kind of, any way you make coffee. You can make bay nut coffee. And I'm kind of just guessing at, I like strong coffee, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, it's kind of like chalkier, if you can see that. Let it sit a minute and then And for really yummy bay nut coffee, add a little cream or whatever you use for creamer and um, a little bit of maple syrup and cinnamon too. I'm just gonna give you a basic black bay nut coffee here. Yeah, that's not quite as strong as I wanted, but you can make it as strong or weak as you want it and it's really yummy mm. and just remember that when you're eating bay nut bay nut anything you are eating a food that california natives have been eating for thousands of years thank you so much for joining like and subscribe